are Pro Cannabis Media. Dr. Ryan Zacklin is recognized as one of the leading cannabis physicians in Massachusetts. Called Dr. Z by his patients and friends, he practices integrative medicine, taking a whole body approach to healing. He is also an expert on the endocannabinoid system, and you'll hear why on In the Weeds with Jimmy Young. Hi, everyone. Welcome to another edition of In the Weeds with Jimmy Young on location today in Newton, Massachusetts. Happens to be my hometown here at the Crown Plaza. It used to be the Sheraton. You know the hotel over the Mass Pike in Newton. You, everybody knows. They've driven under it once or twice in their lives, I'm sure, if you've come into Boston from the West. But today, it's a very special location because it's the place where the Medical Cannabis Patient Therapies and Wellness Summit is taking place. And Dr. Ryan Zacklin, Dr. Z, to his friends and his patients, joins me now and Dr. Z thank you so much for coming on and more importantly thanks for presenting here today thank you for having me and uh, yeah of course, of course. Tell, tell me if you had to nail down an elevator pitch of what you just talked about up on the uh, the dais if you will um, what were the key points of what you were just talking about yeah so what I was trying to hammer home if you will um, one the ECS the ECS the ECS Endocannabinoid system. Yeah, sorry, yeah, the endocannabinoid system. By the way, system. Joe Budweiser, happy to interpret to yeah, other perfect, people. Perfect, okay. Yeah, perfect, perfect, perfect. <laughs> so um, the importance of the endocannabinoid system um, as, as our system of maintaining homeostasis and balance and trying to perpetuate this idea um, that, that, people, that people need this, they need an understanding, they need to grasp the ECS, so that they understand why they may be imbalanced and how they can correct that balance, or imbalance rather. So I took a crash course in this for 18, 19 months since I started my podcast. Yep. I've learned quite a bit from scholars like yourself, doctors like yourself. Dr. Jordan Tischler is a yep. friend and I've known him since the very first day that I started this podcast, March of 2018 oh, great. at NECAN. I love Dr. Tischler. He's learned, learned quite a bit, yep. learned quite a bit. It's amazing to me when you could go up to someone who is a prohibitionist or has just been buying into the whole reefer madness thing for their entire lives and explain to them, you know, you have an endocannabinoid system inside you. And try to, and they go, what are you talking about? You don't know what you're talking about. I go, I'm telling you, you have an endocannabinoid system. Yep. Can you define what that system does and how it works with the body? Yes, absolutely. So, um, and I do want to get back to another point where you were mentioning um, the prohibitionists and whatnot when we yeah. talk about the stigma. The, the stigma. So yeah. let's re return to that. Mm -hmm. But the, the, So there's two ways of looking at the ECS. Mm -hmm. So you know, I'm an integrative physician, which means I look at patients um, and people from the perspective of mind, body, and spirit, if you will. Mm -hmm. So if we're looking just at body or physiologically, um, the, the endocannabinoid system is a system of receptors and neurotransmitters that um, dance in an elegant dance um, and ensemble in which they essentially help to maintain the homeostasis or balance of the organ systems, right? And on a more detailed or microscopic level, what, they, what it is is it's basically a system in which neurons communicate with, with each other and they can either amplify each other or turn each other down depending on the needs of the system. So I mean that would be the so it's really the in a nutshell how we physiologically maintain balance. But for me and one of the concepts that I'm trying to kind of propagate if you will or teach people is you know there's another story there where it's it's clearly the mind body connection mm -hmm. right because it's how the nerves t touch every point of the body. Mm -hmm. So what about the spirit? What about our the anatomy of the spirit and our essence and how does that relate? So I also look at the ECS as that touch point of the mind, body, and spirit, and a way in which we can kind of um, test and, and regulate our own balance both within our body, but also mind, body, and spirit within ourselves and our environment. Gotcha. So I have a, a theory, and I'm going to run it by you and see what your reaction is, because I've talked to other medical professionals, specifically oncologists, about this. I said, so for 80 years, a couple of generations in there, right? This product has been verboten, right? We, yep. we can agree on that. What effect do you think that had on the development of cancer and carcinogens in our system? And if it wasn't prohibited in 1937, would we have as much cancer rampant in our world now? I mean, there's certainly enough cancer carcinogens out there, but it would have helped 
couldn't it? Isn't the whole idea is to balance the internal system? Well, this is a brilliant point that you're making, and I can appreciate it. Why limit it to that? Would we have as much obesity, alcoholism, anxiety, domestic violence, violence, right? If, if you inhibit uh, a population that has a system that responds well to a medicine and prevent them from having access to that medicine, what are the long-term effects? That's a phenomenal point. I gotta shake your hand on Thank that. Thank you one. very I'm, much. I'm gonna use that going forward. I mean, that, I, I would say that it's, it's a very interesting theory um, and I would say don't limit it to cancer, you know, I mean, if, if, because what you're saying is, okay, and let's just take this moment to, to, to talk about this, right? Mm -hmm. So enthusiasts kind of, they'll purport cannabis to be a, a panacea, mm -hmm. right? right? And that's because it often has, um, it, it, it often ha can help many different conditions. Right. But if you rewind back, and we're going to make our way back to that stigma talk, mm -hmm. The ECS is ubiquitous, right? So if you take something that's going to kind of help balance this system that is ubiquitous, it's gonna look like the intervention provided some ubiquitous blanket um, therapy, mm -hmm. right, i.e. a panacea. Mm -hmm. But I think what you're seeing is people are getting back into balance and they're seeing balance of multiple systems. And along those lines, many people also resort to cannabis as the final therapy. Right. So they often have multiple therapies in place. Right. The last resort choice. The last resort choice. But then you put that final piece into the puzzle and it's, oh, my God, the cannabis helped everything. But you also have these other components that are in place that have kind of primed the pump, if you will. Gotcha. And and. It's so fascinating to me to, to hear that support that you actually bought, believe that. And it's a theory I've just learned and figured, look at my family old generation and who's passed away from cancer at a young age versus older age and suddenly and all that. But um, it is not a cure-all for all things. I think that's an important thing that you, we talk about a lot too. Um, and I get pushback on that. It can't be a cure all to all things. I said, no. I said, but it can enhance those anti-immune um, regular antibodies in our system. It kind of enlightens them and gets them going and working at their best. It's almost like um, an engine uh, it, you know, something you could put in your engine to make it work better. Sure. Yeah, I mean, I think that, so the cancer specifically, we have to always be very careful when we talk about cannabis and cancer, right? right. We can't say that, <clears throat> and even as a cure-all, because, mm -hmm. so, you know, a, an antihypertensive doesn't cure blood pressure, but you won't have high blood pressure if you're on that medicine. Right. So it looks like, oh, look, I, it, it cured my, you know, my, 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 my hypertension, but if you remove the intervention, now the hypertension comes back. Yep. So you're not cured of it in that right. way. Cancer, we have to be careful because... You know, we can manage, conventionally it's been shown to manage symptoms, nausea, vomiting with chemotherapy patients, mm -hmm. but you're referring to basically, right, so cannabis interacts with the endocannabinoid system. The endocannabinoid system is, I mean, re interacts with all systems, but particularly the immune system. The immune system is responsible for the surveillance to make sure that a cell doesn't have out of control growth and the natural killer cells will destroy those cells, right? So what you're questioning is, or what, what you're proposing is, well, gee, if, you know, maybe Maybe if you had provided the system with the the, the diet, and I, and I want to go back to what my another point that I would distill out in my, I want to revise my elevator pitch, if you will, based off of this. That's okay. Um, would, would be right. So if if you if you starve the system of something that it would need, as you have the industrial revolution and toxins and chemicals, and those are on the rise. So it could be the combination of the two. Those are on the rise, and now you're removing the tool that helps us to essentially manage it. Yeah, it's it's quite interesting. I mean, it could be perceived as certainly inflammatory, but I understand what you're saying, right. um, and I think it's um, yeah. I mean, it's 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 certainly worth uh, w worth consideration. You know, the next question would be, well, does that mean that everybody should be on some sort of cannabinoid therapy, right? Right. And by the way, that doesn't mean, and this is something I know, we talk about the stigma. Yeah. If you use this product, it does not mean that you have to get high all the time. It doesn't always have to be high in THC, low in CBD. Now they're because they're able to affect the DNA of the plant, they can grow stuff that is twice, has 20, uh, twice as many cannabinoids in it as um, to THC. Yeah, I mean, I, I don't, and, and again, it's just, it's simply that fact, <clears throat> and it's a good, um, it's a good setup, if you will, from what I'm about to say. But yes, 
it, it's dose dependent, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, if you take a sip right. of wine, right. so I, I argue with people, I, I often ask people, so if you take a sip of wine, do you feel anything, right? right? And most people say no, but some people say yes, and they say ding, you do, right? You feel, right, that remembered response, that first sip, that first smell has a physiological effect. I like, need a drink. <laughs> are you intoxicated, though? No, I just no, need a drink. Right? Yes, exactly, you, exactly, right? So. That end of the day, you pour, even pouring the wine, you sit back and, and, and people are like, you start to relax before that first sip, right? But you're not intoxicated. You right. can put it down and go Correct. drive, do work, take care of your kids, yep. whatever it is. Yep. Half a glass of wine, you intoxicated? No, a glass of wine, most people, no. I mean, some, you know, some cheap dates, sure, right? Big difference between a sip and a bottle or two bottles. And that's part of the problem. So that being said, um, when red wine took off because everybody said resveratrol and red wine, which you would actually need to drink 28 bottles of it to get that five milligrams of resveratrol that has beneficial effects in it, <laughs> right? And everybody said, oh, my wine is good for me, right? We're, we're entering the age of, I believe, you're going to have your gummy and your glass of wine, right? It's the entering the age of, you know, your daily aspirin, your daily cannabinoid, you know, uh, therapy, your daily cannabinoid tonic. And I have to say, uh, you know, with that statement, which could be very inflammatory, because I'm implying that it's possible that most people would benefit from some kind of cannabinoid therapy. I am absolutely saying that, but I am absolutely not saying that anybody needs to feel intoxication. And in fact, intoxication might be the body's sign that we've had too much. Ooh. So we're able to play with it because it's not toxic. Right. And that's how we can have that dance. Yeah. But it may be telling you I've had too much. Right. Interesting. And of course, and as a doctor, you understand this. You already kind of alluded to this. Every human body is different. Yes. So, and, and I love it when they talk about indica strains and sativa strains and hybrids. And, you know, if it's an indica, it's going to do this. And if it's a sativa, it's going to do this. And yet, but wait, it ha could have an opposite effect on Correct. people too. Yep. Right? Absolutely. So it, it's almost like, um, and, but the education is so important because we are dosing it, we are self-medicating, and we're learning by taking different doses and different products. Yep, yep, exactly. So it's, as you were talking about wine, it's not dissimilar to that because every wine tastes different. Every beer tastes different. Right. In some yes, in, if you're gonna, well, you could compare alcohols too because you have you, do it right, all the you time. have you have whiskey that <clears throat> is, you know, I mean whiskey might even be better because you can have a whiskey that's 80 <clears throat> proof and a whiskey that's 100 and you know whatever 120 proof. Right. Right. And that those are gonna have different effects. Um, you're gonna feel a different effect. You do feel different from a wine versus a whiskey versus a if you're Correct. mindful of that experience. Yep. But what you're alluding to is the importance of recognizing the variations in human beings right. in that. When it comes to dosing and absorption, I mean, some people respond to a third of a milligram of THC, and some people need 200 or 2,000 milligrams of THC. And, you know, I always joke, I was with my father in law, right? Just like caffeine, there's two other examples. Caffeine, my father in law can drink a triple espresso and go right to sleep. I'll be up for six <laughs> weeks if I drink a triple espresso, right? Exactly. So, I mean, he, you know, the guy can <clears throat> fall asleep in a tank. Thank you for your service, Artie. That's right. Um, but, but, right, so, so that's a difference. There, um, the Asian population in general, specifically Asian women, they lack alcohol dehydrogenase. They can't drink alcohol, many of them, without getting violently sick. What's the equivalent for cannabis, right? We all know somebody who ha ha, you know, took one, the one and dones, or yep. I, every time I take a hit, I have a giant freak out. Um, some people, I know some patients respond to um, the different strains, right? Indica, sativa, some people, it doesn't make a difference. Some people, though, you know, they'll Im 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 imbibe in a sativa, you know, just before they go to sleep and they're fine. And mm -hmm. some people have a cutoff. So I think it's, um, you know, it's a beautiful mess, right? <laughs> and, um, and I think it's, you know, I, I take great pleasure in kind of contributing to sorting it all out. Yeah. And I had an opportunity about a month ago to visit Jamaica. And I interviewed my first Rastafarian. Mm -hmm. And I was thrilled and fascinated by what he was talking about and how the plant, and he, he talked about the mind, body, soul connection with the plant. Yep. And here it, a, a doctor is kind of talking about the same effects that this has. It, again, it reinforces how the Rasta have worked with and lived with that plant forever because now we've got enough science and research to actually respect what they do with the plant. Yeah, it's interesting. I mean, and when you when you talk about kind of um, 
you know, on a spiritual level. So we've also seen this um, this e explosion of consciousness, um, the yoga culture, mm -hmm. mindfulness, mm -hmm. meditation has become mm -hmm. much more normalized. I mean, it started in the 60s, right? Swami right. Satchananda came over, said the opening words at Woodstock, the Maharishi were teaching meditation, the Beatles really helped bring that to light. That's and right. it's become very mainstream, right? So, and now we have with the Benson Henry Institute, Dr. Benson's work um, that he's done looking at the relaxation response, we now have an understanding and quantum physics, right? Where it's we're all this primordial soup manifesting into form and time and space, right? Everything is starting to converge, and we're starting to get this understanding or glean this understanding, if you will, of 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 some of these disciplines and why they were effective. And I think the ECS is key. I think of the ECS as the touch point of the mind, body, and spirit. It's and this is something I talked about in my talk, right? In traditional Chinese medicine, they speak about different different meridians and, and they, they talk about the liver energy and the kidney energy and they're referring to a, a physiological um, reality or phenomenon but they're overlapping in energetic phenomenon an energetic way of thinking about things that help us to um, elicit overlapping therapeutic responses mm -hmm. if you will both on the physiological and energetic level and so the way that I have ultimately distilled out my viewpoint of the endocannabinoid system is that it being the touch point of the mind, body, and spirit, right? So how do we get into physical shape? Diet and exercise. You can't exercise away a crappy diet. If you have a pristine diet, you'll look biomechanically fit for the world, but you're not going to be, and you're, it's going to catch up with you, right? And so they, you can't, they go together like Olivia Newton-John, John Travolta. That's mm -hmm. for our generation. Yeah, yeah. But, um, <laughs> they, and, and they, and, and they, um, they, they work in concert. You need both of them, right? Right. So the same thing applies to the mind the body and the, and the spirit, right? And so if we think about the ECS, I mean, spiritual diet, who are you, who are you spending your time with? What are you reading? Are you taking news fasts? Are you, are you listening to ins things that are inspiring you? Are you hanging out with people that are draining you? It doesn't have to be so esoteric. I mean, even just going to, going to church or temple or wherever you're going is, 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 is a spiritual diet, right. right? And so if we look at the ECS, in, in, as the touch point of the mind, body, and spirit, well, what's the diet and what's the exercise? Well, the diet, we all know. It's cannabinoids, not cannabis, cannabinoids, right? right. We make our own endocannabinoids, but we have a physiology that's designed for a world that no longer exists. Often hours fall short of our needs, so we need to supplement with external cannabinoids, either synthetic or phytocannabinoids. I'll go for the plants. Yep. Who's got the majority of them? Cannabis. Perfect. Now cannabis is the diet for my ECS, right? Very different than the kind of, the Rastafarian viewpoint is more of like, what is this plant that's giving me this experience, that's connecting me with all It's, it's more of a right? love affair. It's a love affair, right? Yeah. But we're not looking at it from that perspective. That's the diet. What is the exercise, right? right. So the exercise is present, non-judgmental, present moment awareness. It is meditation, it's mindfulness, right? It's being in the moment so that we're not obsessing over the future in a hypervigilant state, being anxious, or we're not beaten by our past in a kind of depressed state and depressed. We're in the present moment, and we need to cultivate that as an exercise. We need to learn how to do it. We need to learn how to engage with and disengage from our minds. And so that really is, I know this is a long-winded, um, uh, Diatribe or whatever you want. No, to but it's like. good. I, I'm learning, and that <laughs> and, and it's the, the entourage effect. Yeah. That that is that combines it all, and it, where the THC and the CBD kind of works together as a break. One's the breaking mechanism. One isn't right. Yep. Yes. So I mean, the entourage effect exists. Yep. And it how because it manifests itself differently in everybody's body. It's a challenge. I mean, the ECS is 28 different receptors, <clears throat> 130 to 140 endocannabinoids. If I were to... That they know about now. they know about now. Because it was only a hundred or so a few years ago, yep. and Israel, I think, is leading the way in the research yep. on this, and they're coming up with new chemicals. Every, so everybody's all excited about the CBD. I yep. go, wait, did they learn about CBN and CBF and CBD? I mean, there's a million CBDA, different... THCA, CBDA, THCA, THCA. THCA. It's alphabet soup. It is it, for someone who's trying to just learn, yeah. it is overwhelming. Well, those are phytocannabinoids. I'm <clears throat> talking about endocannabinoids that we make. If I were to put a graphic <clears throat> that depicted all of those receptors and all of the endocannabinoids, it would be dizzying. 
How are you going to make sense of that? Right? You know, our friend at ACS, yeah. Stephen Werther's group at Alternative Compassion Services, I'll give him a plug Shout on this. Shout out to Stephen. That's right, and that whole Good group hand. down there, Chris Liska, the, the, the mad scientist in the back. He does. Stephen is a mensch. Yes, he is. <laughs> well, he comes from a good neighborhood, I can tell you that right now. That being said, on the wall, is exactly what you just described, a graphic of all the different terpenes and endocannabinoids yeah. that are there, and there's hundreds, yeah. and it's, it, it's, it can be overwhelming. It, 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 no, it is overwhelming. It is overwhelming. It's, there's Good, over 200 that. terpenes, there's over, yeah, I mean, I think it's, a, it's well over 100 and something phytocannabinoids, um, there's flavonoids that are now, I mean, it's almost like, oh, terpenes, smurf, and I'm not saying this because I'm, I'm a big proponent of terpenes and I think they, they're a major key, but it's like, oh, terpenes, that was like, you know, 2015, like, now we're on to flavonoids, you know, I mean, what's, what's next? Um, but yeah, it's, it's, it's real, it's dizzying, it's overwhelming. Um, but like I said, it's a beautiful mess. Let's, let's talk about another mess, two, yeah. two messes. Uh, I, I alluded to CBD. Yep. Um, I'm going to quote Chris Liska here because he is the chief science officer at Alternative Compassion Services and I've got uh, solutions and I've sat down with him and I've talked with him about this. It's a fad. This is what he said. It's a fad. And you can't put five milligrams of CBD into a food, a beverage, and expect to just feel amazing. You know, there's a therapeutic dose and a non-therapeutic dose. And the fact now that it's already out there and people believe that it's totally legal and they're not going to get intoxicated from it, that's important. Yep. But what is, we're just scratching the surface on what CBD actually does to us and how when we put it into a lotion or we put it into a food or a beverage, what effect that's going to have on us. Did they, does it boggle your mind that we knew this in the community, and Mitch McConnell and the, the guy who signed the bill for the farm bill just said, oh no, this is great, now CBD is legal and now my Kentucky farmers can grow hemp. <laughs> I mean, they uncovered a Pandora's box when they did that. Yeah, so well, there's a lot in there. I want That's what I do, I'm a talk show host. I, wanna, I set up things like that. I <laughs> want to use the opportunity though to, to go back to the stigma piece, because yep. I think yep. that's the root of what's okay. going on yep. here, right? It's, and, it go, and it relates directly to the ECS as well. It all does. But if we think about what's happened, right, so you, um, you have the prohibition of THC. Um, you know, we could go off on that, right? right. But, why, but we won't. But you, you have this, now you have this emergence of what you're describing is, oh, shit, cannabis works as medicine? Oh, my God. Okay. Well, now we just, we just banned all the, well, what, what can we do? Well, it's convenient. It's almost like CBD is in opposition to THC. Best right. example of that, people say it's, it, it's not psychoactive. How could it treat seizures and anxiety and not be psychoactive? They mean it's not intoxicating. So they don't right. even use the word that they're intending to use, right? right. And so- And I see that in the media all the time. All the time, all the time. And so, the, the, the point that I want to make, and, I, and, I, and then I'll go off on CBD as well, is that it's, I, I think it, there's a better approach to disarming. Because you mentioned before the prohibitionists, you mentioned you know you have an endocannabinoid system, right? Mm -hmm. And the point that I like to make is, right, to those people is, you know, are you anti-GI tract? Like, are you anti-cardiovascular system? Are you anti-nervous system? Are you anti-muscular? Nobody is. That's, it, that's like, that would be like being against the sky. Right? You know, I don't like trees like I don't right I mean I don't really like the sun it's like fine but like you know what I mean it's like it's like you know I mean some people don't that's right, right. No, I know it's because the sun we could talk the about it the sun's different but yeah I, mean, I don't really like trees I don't mm. like I mean you know some people don't like dogs weirdos no I'm just kidding but um no but you know there are things that I mean your people are not against physiological systems right because it's designed by nature I don't like rivers they just really suck you know what I mean or <laughs> mountains what's with mountains right and so it seems absurd but that's right. the point that I'm making is that right. those people are never going to be anti-ECS right they won't be but if you have, if you present something that's in opposition to THC, well, now it's in opposition, and there's a mistruth that's happening, which we'll address in a moment. Mm -hmm. But I think the approach is: here's the ECS, right? This is what's going on. Here, here the diet are cannabinoids. You make them, but right. guess what? You're not making enough, and you probably could use some supplementation with it. And the synthetic ones aren't as effective as the plant ones. Right. And so that's the way that I would frame it. CBD. Um, and I had just talked about this as well. Look, Epidiolex, FDA-approved medication developed by GW Pharmaceuticals, 
the starting dose is two and a half milligrams per kilogram for about, you know, for, for you or I, it probably would be a couple of hundred milligrams twice a day. No, right. twice a day. Two and a half milligrams per kilogram twice a day, okay? Right. How much does that cost? $32,500 a year to right. manage your seizures with epidiolase. Right. If you look at medications that treat seizures and other conditions like pain, so gabapentin, you may cut that dose in half. Yep. But the reality is, is that you might need 75, 100 milligrams twice a day of CBD right. to manage a condition, right? right? It's too freaking expensive. Right. So what you're getting is um, what, what we're seeing in people, certainly there's a, a placebo element, which is fine. That's in every medication. Right. We're also seeing a lot of misnomers and a lot of mistruth. Journal of the American Medical Association did a study in 2017. They looked at 84 products from 31 companies. 21% of them had up to 6.43 milligrams per milliliter of THC. All right, so let's say that person right. had had the dropper. Right. I take my two droppers in the morning, Me two too. droppers at night, and I'm like, woo, I feel amazing. I have no high, right. which they might not. I'm, I, you're taking 12, you're probably taking 20 times the amount of THC I would ever start anybody on. Right. right, so that also is going on, or you have this entourage effect where many of the products from the dispensaries, it's not hemp, it's 0 0.7, 0 0.6% THC, right? I mean, so I have, I have a patient, he, he took, um, he took, he came in with a tremor like this, yep. he couldn't sign his name, Parkinson's patient couldn't yep. sign his name, he took, I think it was like 15 milligrams of CBD with, um, I mean, it had to be, I mean, maybe 0.3 maybe 300 micrograms of THC in it. And he took two of those capsules a couple times a day, came in after two weeks and was like this. Wow. And, and there's so many of these anecdotal stories yes. out there. And it's another reason why I founded my company. Yeah. Because I want to give those stories an audience. Because when we talk about traditional media, there's still a lot of misnomers. There's still a lot of misinformation that the reporter on the story is doing. That being said, I am going to give credit because there are certainly enough journalists out there that are trying to learn the right way sure. to tell the story of what's going on. Sure. And I go back to the Today Show this morning where I saw a very well done piece on a new company in California, uh, Canapure, that has developed a test of the excellent from the person who has inhaled a CBD product or a THC in CBD product and exhaled, now they're testing that vapor that's coming out of the mouth. And th they found a lot of scary things from the illicit market. Do they call it the shotgun? I don't know what they call it. You know, they use shotgun right Oh, now. yeah, no, Mike, those are the old days, man. <laughs> My God. That was a flashback to 78, I think, I just had. Sorry. So what, I never did that with a girl either, by the way, just for the record. I just want to make sure we understand that. Or a guy. All right, let's, let's clear the air there. Anyway, um, I was very impressed with the fact that they were able to do the type of journalism that needs to be done. Yep. Find these companies. And more importantly, they brought up the point, why is it that a start up in California in a month can develop a test for an excellent and the CDC is sitting on all this information and is doing nothing or enough to f cover their asses if you will because I know that's what they're doing yeah I mean that's a good those are and all I, really good questions it's a point yeah. it's not even a question yeah. it's my thought I I was happy that that I saw NBC yeah. do a story that I actually learned something from which was good and it didn't come out as the old um, you know these are bad it was about these are bad products they even showed two legal um, adult use products next to the two illicit products same name different packaging one was legal, one was not legal. So it's making the point again for the industry, you need the regulation, yeah. you need the testing, they need the money for the research, and especially now that people are dying from vaping. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's obviously there are, low, there are a lot of points there. Um, that's what I do, by the way. You figured out my style, did you? I give my opinion, my, my points, and then I look at, is it right? Am I wrong? Where am I, Doc? Because I respect your opinion. I appreciate that. So I think that the, we have to look at the financial motivation, right? Mm -hmm. I mean, the CDC is not financially motivated, and there's <clears throat> nothing wrong with that. It's, you know, capitalism can do a wonderful thing. I mean, it created computers and mm -hmm. iPhones and all, right? So we need that, right? Um, I think that it does go back to a little bit of your, your earlier point of, you know, what happens when you, you know, this, this is damage that's 
occurred that could have been avoided if it wasn't suppressed or prohibited in the first place. Right. Right. Um, and I think another point that comes to mind, though, is, you know, when I hear you talk is, you know what? I mean, I don't like most of my patients, they don't inhale their medicine anyway. They don't. I mean, now I unfortunately. So I never trusted vaping in the first place. OK. okay? Neither, and by the way, neither did Jordan Tischler. And he said it on my one of my first podcasts. Yeah. yeah and I'll, I'll credit him with that. And I'll credit a couple of my friends influenced me and they, and they kind of for several reasons, okay? So the carts, never, I never trust that, and dabbing is a bad idea in my opinion. Um, because, so it goes back to the ECS. Um, mm -hmm. The dabbing is an easy one, right? So first of all, or even high dose THC, but what happens when you pound the insulin system with sugar, 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 sugar? It becomes resistant. You develop something called type two diabetes. Right. You need medicine that may, that hopefully works, right? But it's something that could have been preventable, right? What happens if you block the, what if you blow out your ECS? Well, let's look at Ramanabant, which blocks CB1 and CB2 receptors. It was for, it was for appetite suppression. Mm -hmm. They took it off the market because people were killing themselves, mm -hmm. right? What if we see this in young people that are dabbing regularly? I mean, people are concerned about cannabis hyperemesis syndrome, sure. At least you could stop that and, and you know, just abstain and it's fine. What if you blow out your ECS and you have a rampant depression epidemic right. 10, 20 years from now, five years from now, right? So that's what I'm kind of, that, that's the next level that I'm thinking, but with the vaping, you no, know, first of all, you, these cartridges, I mean, I have a, um, I mean, one dispensary t tested their cartridges. So they take the oil, they test the oil, put them in the carts, and they sell them, right? right. One dispensary tested the cartridges after the fact. After it was sitting for a week, they had concerning lead levels. Now, which ones had concerning lead levels? Was it the, were it the, um, the, the cartridges that had terpenes that were added back to it or flavors that were added to it? Was it the live resin that was pre pre preserved in its more natural form mm -hmm. by which one? It was the free freaking live resin because the terpenes and the cannabinoids were acidic and they started breaking down the element the element in it and started leaching out lead, right? So now you think I'm doing the right thing by right. having, you know, avoiding the additives, right? right? So that's one issue. What about the ones that they take the terpenes down, they add the terpenes back or they're constant? So what, what FDA approved formulation are you using? Limonene is a solvent. It's used in pine, they're even using cleaning products. I know that. So you're gonna concentrate them and inhale them? Yeah. Not my patient. Right. I'm not me, not right. my family member or loved one. Right. Right. So that's another problem with it. Um, you're taking something and you're removing, it's like, I mean, and again, I, I mean, people, the integrative uh, scene would, would uh, I'll, I'll be hung out to dry if I make this comment on juicing, but juicing is debatable, right? The, 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 I mean, especially fruit juice. Well, actually, it's not debatable whether or not fruit juice will spike your blood sugar much more than eating fruit will, right? If you drink a glass of apple juice, you're going to have a spike in your blood sugar. It could be detrimental, whereas eating an apple that contains fiber and other, um, mainly fiber, but other constituents that prevent the sugar from, right? It keeps the sugar in a matrix and allows it to slowly be broken broken down, it's in its natural form. Mm -hmm. Well, now let's flip over to cannabis. What happens if we now we're extracting and concentrating, concentrating everything, concentrating also the pesticides and everything else? I mean, it's, it's, it's an experiment that it, it is not going to turn out well. Now you're also exposing the lungs to high volumes of vegetable oil. I said this before, in fact, I sent out before the vaping ban, once the first illness was diagnosed. Discovered, yep. I sounded out of practice why Dima said I don't recommend vaping to anybody, flour, oil, anything. Really? Period. Well, because, I mean, the flowers, a quick one is these are not FDA approved devices. I mean, I, they're, none of them are FDA approved. Okay. I can't gotcha. in good conscience t recommend so, them. So, and, and by the way, neither is Jordan Tischler, and we, yeah. I asked him that question. I said, what's the difference between vaping a concentrate and vaping a dry flower? If you're putting a vapor, a steam, a liquid thing into your lungs, uh, different than a gas into your lungs. Your lungs are designed for a gas, right? Well, yeah, I mean, yeah. Oxygen's a gas. Yeah. Right? Yeah, but smoke is a gas, it's isn't in, it? Well, it's interesting because the vapor, though, a lot of these cartridges are actually combusting. They're not even, they're not even vaping. Right. But the point I wanted to make, though, is what happened was, if you look at the exposure to vegetable oil, what happened? People now they said, well, it's vitamin E, acetate. They looked, they had lipophilic pneumonia, so li lipids in the in the lung tissues. But at the same time, these kids that are vaping high dose nicotine, they're getting early COPD, protease breakdown. I mean, why would we assume? that, oh, it's the vitamin E acetate. Oh, oh fine, it's no problem. Right. Let me tell you something. <laughs> I, you know, I was on the perpetual search, my patients were on the perpetual <clears throat> search for 
the vape cart that didn't burn the back of their throat if it wasn't on the absolute lowest setting and it was near impossible to find. Jumping to your question about vaping flour, so in theory, vaporizing flour is going to be safer because what, what you're doing is you're not combusting the plant material. You're, you're warming it up right before it combusts. Yes. And that, that's the key. And I think there's actually a, a C-cell cartridge um, out there, and not a cartridge, a um, vaporizer, um, that is a ceramic heated, and it, it's, they guarantee it's at that same temperature every time. Yeah, guarantee. So, right, I know. Uh, so, well, I, mean, I don't even know if they even, yeah, even yeah, use like, that word guarantee. So it's like, I don't want to, yeah, because yeah, I, like, yeah, yeah. I like the product when I was using it. I don't use it now. Yeah, yeah. <clears throat> no, I mean, I, I think that, um, <clears throat> you know, so what you're doing is different terpenes, different cannabinoids have different, uh, essentially, boiling points, right? Mm -hmm. So what, which, what means at certain temperatures, it That's goes right. from a solid, a li uh, well, a solid, essentially, to a gas. It That's vaporizes, right? right? It, it skips the liquid phase. It yep. goes from a solid to a gas. And so as you heat up those temperatures, you're going to release different terpenes, different cannabinoids, and you're going to vaporize those terpenes and cannabinoids, maybe some of the flavonoids as well. And so you're going to inhale those, and you're not going to be inhaling any of the combusted plant material that you do from lighting it, right? Yep. In theory, yes. This is, prob this is probably... So the healthiest way to ingest it is... Eating, which is a whole other, there's a whole other issue with that. We can talk about the chemical. We'll talk about that in a, yeah. <coughs> we can talk about that. Go ahead. We'll talk about that in a moment. <clears throat> but the <clears throat> issue that I have with vaping flour are, like I said, are these devices. It's early days. What is in that chamber that's lining, right? So it's, it may be a ceramic chamber. I don't know what they line it with. I don't know what's right. in the, the chamber <clears throat> that goes up to the mouthpiece. What's in the mouthpiece? The mouthpiece is plastic. I mean, plus if you can measure what I'm exhaling, like that company in that yeah. story I saw, that's really going to tell you whether it's the heating unit or it's the concentrate or yes. what's in it. That you're putting into your lungs because you're you're getting rid of something. Well, it, well, it, well, it, you'll know what your what your the byproduct is, but right. you, you won't know what you're inhaling. I mean, you would have to know what you're inhaling. It changes. So what you're saying is the product actually is going to change as you go into the body and then exhale it because the body is interacting with that. Well, I believe you uh, you absorb uh, the majority of the THC, if not all of it, on the first. This is why I, I uh, would always joke about this. That I mean, shotgunning is different. I mean, we're just. I mean, that's I think putting a. They put a joint in your mouth and blow it into somebody else's. Right. That, that's different because right. you're blowing the joint in their direction. But people used to, I've seen people, you know, this was in high school, college, whatever, people right. would inhale, yeah. right? And then they'd inhale it and into it, the next person. And right. the, the joke is that that exhale doesn't have any THC in it. Yeah. So it's, yeah, I'd be curious to see what, what is contained in it. But like I said, I mean, I can't, you know, I have to be, especially as we're trying to, I'm trying to uh, establish an ECS specialty. I'm trying to establish legitimacy. I'm trying to bring, or, or rather, I'm trying to um, educate people on legitimacy because it is legitimate. Right. Not, you know, it is established. I'm trying to, you know, take down stigma and break down walls. And so I took an oath. And, and my products that I recommend, I mean, they're FDA approved. Anything I prescribe is FDA approved, right? Any devices. Um, that my patients are going to use need to be FDA approved. Now, is cannabis FDA approved? No, it is not. Correct. Right? Cannabidiol is. Yep. So then why am I comfortable with that? Um, in my practice, I don't recommend inhaled therapy to the majority of my patients. I see if they can get away with, with oral therapy. For certain patients that have issues with absorption or in, in certain cases now, I've actually lend myself to, I start recommending either, um, you know, a small one hitter or an efficient way, yep. using edibles to offset and minimize the amount that you might have to inhale or smoke. Yep. Uh -huh. um, and, you know, I never thought that I would, but I think, you know, we have, we have hundreds and thousands of years of, you know, I didn't make this comment, I made a comment in my talk that, you know, cannabis has been used for 5,000 years, right? I like what Jordan says. He says, that doesn't mean we should still use it. There are lots of things we were doing 5,000 years ago. <laughs> we don't do anymore. We don't do anymore, okay? <laughs> so that's not a great argument for that. But it's interesting because from a safety profile perspective, yeah. I mean, people have been smoking pot for generations, you know, for generations, centuries, centuries. You know, yeah. uh, Donald Tashkin set out to prove that it caused head, neck, and lung cancer. And he said, you know, this guy's a pulmonologist. And he's like, no, I can't, I can't say it does. Right. You know, so, so that, that's why I'm comfortable. Um, I think it's, you know, you're taking, but, but I'll start them off on edibles initially. Always. And it has a different effect on you. I mean, it really does. Uh, the, the full body high, the full body intoxication, if you will, if you're on an edible, the tinctures made me nauseous. So I don't like tinctures because I don't like to 
be nauseous. Yeah. You know? Um, Most people don't. Right. I know that. Well, it, although I know a lot of people who drink a lot of alcohol oh, who, that's true, that's true. who yeah, get to that nausea. The nausea. I'm just saying, yeah, uh, true, I, I, I've seen it, and yeah. I'll admit, that's, it's, it, that's why one of the reasons why I don't like to be nauseous, yeah. right? Anyway, so go back to um, the absorption yeah. of how your body interacts with an edible product versus an inhalant. Yeah, so, and I think it's important because you, you may, in this uh, distinction I really want to hammer home, because you said, you, you know, you, you said the whole body higher intoxication is yep. different, right? Yep. So let's talk for a moment about the three types of use that I see in the triad of, meta, of mm -hmm. cannab cannabis use, mm -hmm. all right? So there is, and what they mean. So there's medical cannabis is using your cannabis therapeutics, right? Medical cannabis, using cannabis medicinally is using cannabis to manage a particular symptom or condition, right? Intoxication is a side effect or an adverse effect that is often unwanted, right? Right, for medical <clears throat> cannabis, mm -hmm. right? In, in a, a pure medical cannabis patient. The flip side of that is adult use, which I don't, I mean, I like recreation, recreation, but adult use is like, it's such a, we, it's gotta go. We gotta come up with it. I mean, just go with rec, it's just easier. But anyway, I digress. And we get into marijuana versus cannabis too, if you want to well, talk I about marijuana. I, I don't like marijuana. marijuana. I don't say marijuana. Neither do I, yeah. neither so, do I. So, um, but, but adult use though, the purpose of adult use is intoxication, right? It's recreation, recreation, right? You already feel good, life is good, you're just having fun. Right. So it's a way to shift out, connect with people, whatever it is, but it's that's pure adult use. Well, what's the bridge? And to me, the bridge is therapeutic use, okay? So therapeutic use is using cannabis to feel better, mm -hmm. have a little fun in, in life and enjoy life, but often manage a particular condition. Now, a lot of times that could be depression or anxiety, right. right? And so there's a bridge, but intoxication there is often a part of the picture. Yep. It's often embraced um, in therapeutic use. And I think that's a very important distinction, right? So if we're talking about recreational, you're probably gonna be smoking. Right, therapeutic. You're probably going to be smoking, sh sharing a uh, you know a joint with some friends on a Friday There's evening. There's certainly right? a socialization yes. aspect to it. It always has been. That's very that's very positive, and and you know having you know it's like the the cliche is you know wine with the ladies, beers with the boys. Today it's wine with the boys and beers with the ladies, right? And so whatever it is, but having a joint, you know, having you know whatever it is, um, that is going to have a positive benefit. Now medicinal though. Right? What you're referring to, with medicinal does not require inhalation, not at the onset. And what the phenomenon you're referring to is when we ingest THC orally, right? Tinctures are another thing. The whole, um, the, the whole oral mucosal absorption, I don't use them for that. That's quite debatable. Um, and how quickly tinctures hit you, that's not why I use them. Mm -hmm. I use tinctures for dose titration. Why? Because you can take a drop, and I know how much is in that drop. I can, I can do. I can give a patient a 0.33 milligrams. An accurate an, dosing. Re relatively accurate. And that's dosing. that's a medical background. Not accurate, by no, the way. No, I, I right? know. There's that. a there's a range, so it's it's important to make that distinction. Too, Absolutely. Right? That ten, that tw you know 25 milligrams of the tenolol could be 20. It could be. I don't know the exact range, but so I use tinctures for dose titration. Now, when you take Delta 9 THC orally, it's converted in the liver to 11 hydroxy THC. That is a longer acting psychoactive metabolite, right. more psychoactive metabolite. That's the Colorado story in a nutshell. I ate the quarter of a cookie, didn't feel anything. 20 minutes later, I ate the other quarter of a cookie, didn't feel anything after that 20 minutes, so I ate the other half. Then the first quarter kicked in, then the other quarter kicked in, and then the half kicked in, and then I asked my you know, husband or wife, my spouse, to take me to the ER, because right. I thought I was having a heart attack. Right. right. A lot of that, and then last, or I was high for a day. That's the 11-hydroxy effect. Mm -hmm. So if you're gonna use edibles to get high, you are most likely going to overshoot. Right? Right. But that is recreational and therapeutic. If you're using edibles for medicinal, well now we're in a different realm because now we can take a tincture and now I can I can recommend, I don't prescribe, right? Mm -hmm. But I can recommend start with one drop of an indica tincture at night and we'll take it from that's 0.33 milligrams, wait several days, go up in a drop.
We talk about, um, right, uh, going back to the, the diet and, and exercise, right, meditation and cannabis. Mm -hmm. So I teach my patients meditation. Nice. I start out with five minutes of meditation. We might start out with maybe three drops of a tincture. Yep. So I tell them, increase your meditation when you increase your medication. So in a few days, if you go to four drops, go from five minutes to five and a half minutes. You know, a few days later, you go to five drops, go from five and a half minutes to six minutes, right? And so that... I have a, plenty of patients that have gotten plenty of benefit from oral ingestion. Yep. It's just you got to mm. keep it in that medicinal realm. Once you enter the therapeutic realm, even for you know, even for a veteran user like yourself, right? It's like <laughs> the, like the tinctures are like, well, you'll you'll talk to many many uh, you know veteran smokers who are like, right. I don't do edibles. Right. They're scared of them actually. Right. No, no. I, I had a bad. I had two bad experiences. Yeah. Um, one was involved with alcohol, so that's my own fault. Yeah. Okay. But I did stop drinking as soon as I felt it, and it wasn't too long into that. You yeah. know. Yeah. So you, again, you're self medicating you you are a self guinea pig you're trying to find out what works for you um, you know how the uh, there's a culture of um, reviews of different strains that are yeah. out there right and I mean that's great but it doesn't tell me what effect it's going to have on me because I'm different than whoever wrote it right yeah and that I keep going back to that and and we're all experimenting with ourselves and how this product interacts with us and how it can fit into our lifestyle in whatever way. Now there's so many different ways to ingest it, to partake, as yeah. they say in the world. Um, all this being said, first of all, I love talking to people that are intelligent about medicine and cannabis because I learn from you and I am a medical card holder and I have horrific arthritis and I'm s sitting here in pain every time I turn my body. It's a soft tissue issue, but it, after work, after I'm done being on camera and talking to people, I do relax, and it does go away when I relax. Yep. So, and I've got a million different things that you I don't different have to try. You during the day, Jimmy. You know. You know what? We can talk about that I'm after. so focused. I'm so <laughs> focused on uh, just my job right now and putting every, keeping everything together yeah. that that's working yeah, for yeah, me yeah, right yeah, now. Yeah, yeah, no, right. Yeah. So, and you know, the ADHD thing is forget it. It's yeah. in me. It's never going to go away. And of course, now I completely lost my train of thought. But I do want to go back to stigma. Have we made it looks like we have made a lot of strides. Washington, D.C. has passed a Safe Banking Act through the House. This is the first major step towards at least um, recognizing and respecting that there's a new industry out there and that people are using this product. And by the way, more people are using the product from the illegal market than the legal market right now. And the whole idea is I want to know where it came from, what's in it, and what it might do to me. Yeah. That's the whole point of this, yeah. right? Are we making any progress? Yeah, I, th yes. We are definitely making progress. I would say that we are rounding the corner of the bottom of the first. We're probably getting into the second inning now, I'd say. Okay. Right? I mean, we had a big consolidation with the, you know, can of stock explosion that's now every, you know, this whole madness, right? I mean, some of these dispensaries have been bought out. I think adult use um, in Massachusetts um, has really made a difference mm -hmm. and I'm seeing it <clears throat> um, on the front lines um, because what I notice is now people are comfortable getting their little gummy or they're having their it's just becoming more acceptable mm -hmm. and I think that it's you know it's still going to take time but um, I mean, I'm having conversations with people now that I wouldn't have had two years right. ago. You know, oh, yeah, right. Oh, right. Exactly. To you know, speak <clears throat> at events and speak at places that I wouldn't have been invited to um, uh, even two years ago. Wow. Somebody, who somebody had told me it was you know, cannabis years are like dog years. You have like seven yes. years yep. to catch up. You know, right. and, and it really has felt like in the past couple of years or the past year, it's felt like seven years have passed. Um, so I do think we are making progress. I think we're, you know, maybe rounding into the second inning. The one thing, you know, it's always a shameless plug for my, for myself and my practice and my colleagues like Dr. Tischler um, and, and the true cannabis therapeutic clinicians that are out there. You mentioned self-medicating. I never recommend that, right? I mean, I don't, I think that, 
I mean, I think for two reasons. You know, safety profile, sure. I mean, if you're going to keep it under five milligrams and have your five milligram gummy, but mm -hmm. people drink. How do you, how do right, you, right? Your, right? How do you, in, you know? I, I learned the either or mess. That's a very important lesson to learn. And, you, and you're an experienced cannabis yes, user, right? I am. That yep. has a familiarity with it. Yes, I comfort, am. Right? right. So it does cause bronchial inflammation, right? So there are factors there. I think if you, and then the other piece is like, do you want to be able to learn how to use it effectively? So, I mean, I wouldn't, you know, if you were in poor cardiovascular health or you suspected you were, I mean, you probably would go see a cardiologist, right? right. If your GI tract was a I mess and you had IBS, right. you probably start with your gastroenterologist, right. right? So it goes back to the ECS. If you're a little imbalanced and you have a healthy curiosity as to whether or not cannabis would be effective for you, I think you should go, go see a cannabis specialist. specialist. That's great. And you're definitely one of them. I'm definitely and one I'm of them, yeah. And I'm proud to know, too, that I really like now because I just did meet you and you did live up to your reputation. I thank you so much for taking as thank much time much. as you did. We started thinking 15 minutes and we've gone almost an hour. <laughs> oh, but I, 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 I thank I you. I could go on for four hours. And, I, and by the way, I, four I hours could. Four 20 minutes. And I, that's, oh, God, here we go again. We could certainly <laughs> talk about that one, too. But anyway, <laughs> yeah. uh, Dr. Ryan Zacklin, how can they find you? Uh, you can find me, uh, so uh, my website is www.zacklin.com, Z-A-K-L-I-N.com. Come see me, um, come contact me, I'm happy to chat or help anybody who's in need. And, I'll, and I appreciate that, and I'm definitely in meet, need, and I can tell you, I always was hanging out with the people with the last name of Z uh -huh. in the back of the room, because I'm a Y, oh, and you yeah. know, if everything was alphabetical for your seating back in the day when they actually assigned you in classes, yeah. right? We you know, Reverse alphabetical oh, author. Oh, 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 no. No, I never, I you hated know, me, being I, in the front. I, I was an advocate for reverse alphabetical order. <laughs> I want to be in the back of the room. Yeah, it's very that's comfortable. True, that's true, that's, that's true. really where it's comfortable. Thank you so much, Dr. Ryan Zacklin. That'll do it for another edition of In the Weeds with Jimmy Young on location here for the, I'm going to read it again, the Medical Cannabis Patient Therapies and Wellness Summit here in Newton, Massachusetts. So for Dan French, who's behind the camera and puts all this stuff together, I thank him. For Dr. Ryan Zacklin, I thank you. And I thank you for liking, sharing, and talking more about cannabis because it's a whole new world of weed out there. Use it responsibly. We are pro-cannabis media.